Um, it's been a frustration to me, and one of the reasons I'm willing to come to forums like this, that there is such a, a, a bifurcated point of view between what's perceived as big ag and what's perceived, and, and I, I lump these, I hope, without offending anyone, but the organic food movement, which is complemented sometimes and or combined with the local food movement and the um, locavores. The, I don't, I'm frustrated by the fact that there's conflict there because I think there's great wisdom in organic principles being applied to, to production agriculture. And I think those principles were ignored for a great, looking backwards, AG, a large part of the latter half of the 20th century, the specialization, the monoculture, the, the, the introduction of, of chemical controls and um, fertility techniques that were done without respect for or regard for or knowledge of the effect that runoff and, and other things were having on the surrounding lands. I think the, the energy around organic production is, is a result of that and I think it's wise. I think the definition that was politically decided about what was and was, wasn't labeled organic and that was a political decision when the label was actually announced by the USDA, what was in and what was out, drew some lines that put some tools in there and some tools out. And it was necessary because there had to be a definition, but I'm sorry that it's not a more evolving sort of understanding in our world because I, we are using much more friendly production practices. We're now using chicken litter whenever we can instead of phosphorus and potassium that's mined. Now, I got to tell you, my neighbors, when the chicken litter is spread and the subdivisions aren't as happy as they were when it was the non-odorous materials that were mined, so they're trade-offs. Join my world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, what, and, and back to the, my, my premise on my farm and the point that I, I try to make and would, and would like to make in all forums, there's room for all of it. And, and, and your point, Charlie, that 4% right now is organic, that, that's a statistic. I would hope that... There's nothing wrong, and it's actually wonderful, and it actually, the 1% of us that are on farms are less, and the 99% that are not, the 99% are increasingly unaware of the challenges of producing food. If urban gardens and local food make, makes people aware of those challenges and respectful of the effort that it takes for a fresh tomato or a bell pepper, or the fact that they will never have a banana again in North Alabama, I mean, sorry, North America, if, if they can't import that. The, the luxury of supermarkets is to some degree, the, the consumer will be educated by these trends in this energy. So my hope is that the conversation, and I think this solutions from the land could be a, a good forum for it, the conversation about it's not this and this, it's all of this coming together to understand how to do more, produce more, and that's one of the premises of this report, I mentioned it first, on the same land wisely. And I think both technology, which can, should be used wisely, it's not the end all be all answer. Resistance is developing, or it, that whole system is evolving. Organic systems evolve and change. So my hope, maybe naive, is that these conversations will pull some middle ground and that the extremes can, can not get as much of the coverage, frankly, on both ends of that. Because I think there's a lot of middle ground. <laughs>